Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Maya with Simply Bloom. So I'm standing right in front of my flocks today, which is my favorite part of the garden, and they have this delicate smell that just perfumes the air, and I love it. Um, the reason why I'm standing here is because like right behind the flocks, I planted some Joe Pie weed earlier in the year. It was just suffering in the can. I'm like, where can I put it to get it out of the can? And I liked the height wise because the Joe Pie weed gets about four feet tall, which would come right above the flock so you could see it. But the more I thought about it, I'm like, eh, I'm not sure I like it there. Like the two different pinks, pretty, but not quite what I'm looking for. And then Steph from Flower Fanatic posted a picture on Instagram of her Joe Pie weed right behind her rubecchia and it was gorgeous i'm like genius stuff so that's what i'm doing today let me show you okay so these pink purple flux are the luminary series from proven winners this is ultraviolet and then i have a white david flux which never never performs as well as the ultraviolet flux and then right here is my joe pie weed please ignore all the weeds like I said, it's going to get about four feet tall, two feet wide. So it would have filled this corner in really nicely, but I'm moving it by my Rubecchia. Here's my Rubecchia along with quite an established oak seedling. I wasn't sure if I could sneak it back there, but my chickens completely just scratched out my delphinium seedling that I planted is doing so well. It's just about to bloom too. So I think I'm actually going to put the Joe Pye weed right here. It'll fill in this corner. It's right in front of a silver mound. I learned you're supposed to cut it back in June so it doesn't do this. I did not. So I will uh, cut it back next June. Hopefully that will keep it together. I have a fox glove and a peony. I will be moving that peony just to make room for Joe Pie weed right here, so I think that'd be really pretty with everything. And then my rose, this rose blooms all season long. I've came in and deadheaded it twice, which I need to do again. This is the Miracle on the Hudson rose, absolutely gorgeous. So once I move that Joe Pie weed over there, I am left with another hole and I have an idea I have some heliopsis going crazy behind my garage and I actually tried I was trying to do this transplanting method earlier I knew I wanted the heliopsis right here but I wasn't sure where to put the joe pie weed now I know thank you flower fanatic um, I couldn't move the heliopsis before because I don't think it was planted there uh, it's growing through landscape fabric. Now I don't use landscape any landscape fabric anymore, but it was growing through landscape fabric where it, there was no hole cut around the plant. So it somehow grew through the landscape fabric. Couldn't, couldn't find scissors to cut the landscape fabric. So I found scissors. So we are going to attempt to move the Heliopsis to right here. All right, I'm gonna grab a shovel, put some gloves on and get to work. This is a culprit of who scratched my delphinium. Two of them. Two of my delphinium seedlings just scratched right off at the top. Eat the bugs, leave the plants alone. They have a chicken coop. We're in the process of getting a new chicken coop. So their current chicken coop, the, the uh, chicken wire is rusting, which happens over time. We've been kind of trying to patch it without spending too much fixing the old because I'm hoping to be getting a new one in the next few weeks. And then, you know, don't want to dump money in the old when you can just like make the new one nice. Look at her. Scratching. Come on. Out. Come on. Come on. Out. All right. Let's get to planting.
Okay, I know Heliopsis, they're pretty tough perennials, but I think I just killed it. <laughs> oh, that was so hard getting it up. Oh, that landscape fabric going like right up to the stem. I know these spread like crazy. Um, so I'm gonna be watching this one closely because I don't really want it to take over this whole corner. But I think these flocks will do a pretty good job on holding up on their own. But I love it. I love that little pop of yellow. I wanted to get a much bigger clump. I only got like a quarter of the clump that I was trying to dig up. Because there was, um, it was right behind a weeping cherry. And those roots were going, the cherry roots were going right through the Heliopsis plant. And I didn't want to cut through the roots. And I, well, I was trying with the shovel. I couldn't get it with the shovel. I didn't want to go get loppers to cut through the roots. So I just got a very small section and I have to lean it up against the flocks because it just, after that transplant, it can no longer support itself. But at least I see what it looks like. And if this clump doesn't make it, I'm just going to go to the store and get a new Heliopsis plant <laughs> next spring. But I really like it there. What do you think? I really like that. Do different angles. So when it's standing up straight, you know, it'll be about this height. So you can kind of see it peeking through. And then when you come from this angle, it will just fill in that whole section. Really, really nice. And then I moved the peony there, the chicken. I had a delphinium right here that the chicken scratched off and killed as well. So the story with this corner, this here is a hitching post. We used to have horses. So the bed goes behind it. You need to cut and edge the grass. This is a sumac, which adds beautiful structure, but it's popping up suckers everywhere. I'm constantly pulling suckers. Um, all these stumps here were sumac stumps that we've cut down. And I want to cut this section down as well. And then I never finished the corner back there of cardboard and mulch because there's a bunch of like electrical wire. So I want to, yes, our chicken made a nest there. Um, so I want to chop off the sumac, figure out what all that wire is, <laughs> and then finish mulch and cardboard because this sumac just shades too much. It's shading everything else in the bed. I will leave you alone. Uh, so yeah, I planted the peony there. I guess I can't remember what variety it was. When I dug it up, it looked like I had it planted too deep over in the other section, which would kind of explain why it looked like it was struggling all year. So I made sure to bump it up higher. You want to make sure you do not bury the eyes any lower than two inches deep. Otherwise it struggles and you will not get any blooms. So we'll see if it'll be happier this way. I am obsessed with this view. I love it. I love the Rubecchia. I love the dark foliage of the dark side of the moon Astilbe. I love the silver foliage of the silver mound. Hopefully, like I explained earlier, it'll be more mounded if I kind of shear it back in June. And then the Joe Pie weed. I love it. Love, love, love. So I kind of try to put it right in the middle. I have two clematis. And I love it. Okay, you guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad I finally got this done because like I mentioned earlier, I was trying to do this, gosh, like a month, month and a half ago and it just didn't work out, but I have it done now and I love where everything is. So thank you, Steph from Flower Fanatic for inspiring me to move my Joe Pie weed over there. I'm obsessed. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.